I'm Taylor McLemore, and this is what I wear on Wednesdays. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the title fight of the evening, the battle of the sexes. In this corner with two X chromosomes weighing in at, well, she wouldn't tell me, we have the women. And in this corner, we have the slightly heftier men. Ignite Boulder. Let's get ready to rumble. So tonight we're gonna talk about the psychology of how sexes compete. Let's start by thinking about where this shows up in our culture. So if you go all the way back to 1914, there was a movie, Battle of the Sexes. There was also the famous tennis match, which the women won, Billie Jean King over Bobby Riggs. Road Rules, Real World Challenge Battle of the Sexes, and probably the most important contribution was an album Battle of the Sexes by the one and only, Ludacris. Um, <laughs> competition is important in lots of places. Economics says it's important for the proper distribution of resources. Biology says it's a critical part of evolution. So it's everywhere. So, is it good? Is it bad? I think it can be both, but it's important to understand it, and I hope to elucidate a little bit more tonight. I want to use an example from when I went to college, at Davidson College, North Carolina. And, <laughs> oh, someone actually heard of it in Colorado? That's crazy. Um, anyways, uh, two examples of great mate selection competition. First one, this guy, um, Dan is dancing with Hunter's girlfriend on the dance floor at this formal event. What happens, you know? You'd hope, eh, you know, they'll work it out all cordially like we're taught. Not quite so. Hunter rush, rushes, rushes onto the dance floor, pops Dan in the face. Standard male aggressive behavior. Made me think back a little bit to an incident we all probably remember, World Cup-ish, something like that. <laughs> Example number two, female side here. There's this girl there, Catherine, at the event. Likes the date that Jill brought, sneaks up behind Catherine glass of red wine, white dress, spills it down the dress, taps her on the shoulder, excuse me, I think you spilled on yourself. Jill has to run away so that she can clean off her dress, and by the time she comes back, Catherine's on the dance floor with her date, and what does she see? Murder on the dance floor. Ugh. So, um, different types of competition, but to think about this, remember that in this situation, men are competing with men for, w for women and women with women for men. So we can't directly compare those. Let's take a page out of evolutionary psychology to think about how they compete. Women, as the ones that bear children, have a greater investment in that child. So being physically harmed has more detriment to them for the purposes of procreation. Men don't have as much investment. so. <laughs> They're willing to go a little bit more into it. So it's really a difference in risk aversion between the, how men and women compete and get in competitive situations. So now I want to talk a little bit about how men and women compete against each other. Hopefully it looks like this. Um, <laughs> there was a great study done using a video game where men and women competed. And the response of men competing against women was very interesting. There were two groups. The first group, actually based on personality type, type A guys who are more inclined to compete, um, they had similar physiological responses, heart rate, blood pressure, to that of competing against other men. In other words, they were very engaged with competing with women. Um, even though they were worried about losing to girls and looking bad for competing with girls, they were still very involved. T the second group was type B personality guys, and they actually pulled back. So their physiological response to competing with women was lower than competing with men. Now, I have a suggestion how you can use this, ladies. Do you have a guy on the hook? Hopefully you do. Um, put him in a competitive situation, see how he reacts. Might give you some good information if you know what type of guy you're looking for. A little bit like our uh, Pac-Man friend here. So. <laughs> I wanted to do this talk because I work at a social gaming company called Predictulous that we just launched. And I, what we do there is you predict the future against your friends, sports, entertainment, pop culture. I wondered who was better at predicting the future? Uh-oh. <laughs> Ladies, you won the first round, but I was hopeful. I was like, guys, we got to be better at sports. Sadly, they were actually better, girls were better at it than guys in sports. Now I was like, come on, other stereotypes. 
uh-oh, the girls actually were making the predictions in less time than the guys. None of this, oh, they take longer to get ready. So I know, guys, I sold us down the river a little bit, but the data was the data. So I'm going to leave it that because I've only been married six months, and I think I just gave my wife a lot of good data for saying that she's right more of the time than I am. <laughs> so gentlemen, let's, be, let's not be poor sports. When the ladies are taking a little bit longer in the bathroom, let's hold their purses so they don't remind us they predict better and faster. Good night. <laughs>